It was never my intention to write a book. My personal relationship struggles had led me into therapy and recovery from what, in time, I came to call the nice guy syndrome. I began this journey trying to find out why being nice, pleasing, generous, self-sacrificing, and giving, and often avoidant, less than honest, manipulative, and approval-seeking, didn't make my wife happy and didn't make her treat me the way I wanted. I quickly began to learn about boundaries, self-care, toxic shame, making my needs a priority, soothing my anxiety, covert contracts, and honesty and transparency. As a marriage and family therapist, I also began to notice that many men who came to me for counseling with their wives and girlfriends seem to be and talk a lot like me. I'm a nice guy, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. I treat her well, better than her ex. I do everything to make her happy, but it's never enough. She's angry all the time, and she never wants to have sex anymore. When is it going to be my turn? I could finish their sentences for them. I realized that I was not alone in my life paradigm based on the facade of niceness. Other men had a very similar, faulty roadmap. Upon this realization, in the early 90s, I started my first No More Mr. Nice Guy men's group and began writing handouts for the men in this group that explained what I was learning about the causes and cures of the nice guy syndrome. In time, I was leading up to five of these nice guy recovery groups a week. These men and their wives and girlfriends began telling me that I should write a book. So, for seven years I wrote. Upon completion, I worked three more years to get my book published. Now, some 17 years since publication, that book, No More Mr. Nice Guy, has been translated into multiple languages, has become a perennial bestseller, and is changing lives around the world. Enter Dr. Michael Pariser, a recovering nice guy himself, whom I met in 2012 when he came to Seattle to do a workshop with me. We developed an immediate bond that grew into a deeper relationship as Michael became my colleague and friend. What's more important, he shared my commitment of taking the No More Mr. Nice Guy message to the world.